Hi, today we're gonna to be making some beautiful genetic jewelry. We're going to make a, an accurate, uh, beautiful model of a DNA molecule. Um, we wanna get started by making sure we have all of our uh, materials assembled. So we've got some clear round beads to represent our sugars and some clear gold beads to represent our phosphates. This is gonna make our sugar phosphate backbone. And then I've got four different color beads to represent the four different bases we find in DNA. Um, a is blue and it's always gonna be across from a T, which is gonna be yellow. Notice that the A's are kind of longer and the T's are kind of shorter. And then G and C will always go together. G is kind of longer and C is kind of shorter. And there's always gonna be a long bead across from a short bead. So the DNA is the same width across um, as we go and you know make the whole ladder. All right, okay, so to get started, I've got some nice uh, 28 gauge or thinner, really thin wire, because it's got to go through these, these beads a couple times. Um, and we just want to start with the first letter that we're going to be making. So for my example, I'm going to be making uh, amino acid cysteine, oops, uh, which is letter C, is it's one letter abbreviation. Uh, and one of the RNA codons, there's actually more than one that makes cysteine are the letters UGC. And then if I transcribe that into DNA, uh, U goes with A, G goes with C, C goes with G. Um, and then I can even kind of just to help myself along, make sure I know what the base pairs are, right? What the, the different letters that will be across from that is. So for our example, I'm just gonna be making uh, a little teeny tiny piece of DNA. Yours is gonna be four amino acids and 12 base pairs. Um, so you're gonna get to do this a little bit longer, but to get you started, um, we're gonna start with those letters. So I need to start with letter A. So on one end of my wire, I'm going to put a blue B to represent the adenine letter A. And then on the other end, I'm going to put its base pair buddy, which is letter T. You can remember that the straight letters, straight line letters go together, and then the curvy letters G and C go together, right? Okay, so I've got my, <laughs> I've got my a and T across from each other here, right? And then we're gonna start building our sugar phosphate backbone. So I'm gonna put a sugar, a clear bead on each side. So one on the right, one on the left. Those are my sugars, got some clear beads. We're gonna try to keep these kind of in the middle of our our wire can be a little tricky at first um, and it's not it's not that important there's a lot of adjusting that can still be made at this point um, but it's just a little easier if we keep them sort of in the middle for now all right and then uh, phosphate so first the sugar first the clear bead and then the phosphate the yellow bead all right it's harder than it looks all right, we're just gonna let those slide down to the middle. So it's gonna look uh, something like this. Oop, where'd my other phosphate go? There we go. All right, so it should look something like this. All right, I've got some, my first base pair. My letter A is my first DNA base here. And across from it is a T, which is a yellow bead. And then I've got a sugar and a phosphate. All right, so now we're gonna start building our next base pair. See, we're already ready to start our next base pair. Um, so on the same side that my A was on, so for me, that's the left side, I'm gonna put a C, which is a red bead. All right, ooh, actually, pause that. First, we need to put another sugar to build our sugar phosphate backbone. Almost forgot that step. All right, so before we do our second base pair, your DNA molecule should look like this. And if you uh, link to the lesson plan for this, um, there's some slides that have some still photos of each of these steps too. All right, so I've got my A with T and then I've got sugar, phosphate, sugar. All right, I'll put this, give, me, give you a different color backdrop here in my hand. Right, sugar, phosphate, sugar. All right, then we're ready to go ahead and put our next base pair on. And for me, yours might be different, um, but for me, I'm gonna be putting a C on one side, a red bead on one side, 
And anytime I put a red bead, its base pair buddy is gonna be a green bead, right? Because C always goes with G. All right, so now we look like this. We got our second base pair lined up and ready to go. All right. All right, and then after every time we make a base pair, we're gonna be adding more to the sugar phosphate backbone as well. All right, okay, so here's the tricky step, and this is gonna be really tricky the first time you do it. It's gonna seem really weird, um, but after you do it a couple times, it's gonna get so easy, and um, this is gonna feel like knitting, and it'll be relaxing and fun for you to build your DNA molecule. All right, so we're gonna take one of our base pairs. So for me, that's the little red bead here and one of the sugars, that last sugar. So just your last DNA base and one sugar. And we're gonna take the other end. So see, this is, the, this is the end that that bead is through, and this is the other end, all right? So we're gonna take the opposite end. We're gonna kind of make like a circle, right? So hopefully you can see how this is making a circle, right? So here's all my beads and it's coming, this is the other end coming around. And I'm gonna put the end backwards through my base and my sugar. All right, just one base and one sugar. So for me, that's a red bead and a clear bead like that. All right, and then I'm gonna do the same thing on the other end. I'm gonna pull this through a little more so it stays put while we, so you can see better. All right, so we're gonna take the other end and I'm gonna grab just that base. For me, that's a green bead and that sugar. And I'm gonna put the end right on through those, those two. So this is why you need to use a teeny tiny wire because the wire is gonna go back through these beads twice like this. All right, there we go. All right, so see how it kind of makes a, a circle where it's looped back around. And then you're just gonna go ahead and pull it, pull it, pull it, pull it, and it's gonna make a ladder. It's gonna loop around and it's gonna make your first couple of base pairs. Right. All right, and then for me, my third base, I'm ready to go ahead and add the next base pair, right? But notice, see how it goes sugar, phosphate, sugar? All right, I'm gonna need another phosphate, right? It should always alternate on the side of your DNA. It should always look like sugar, phosphate, sugar, just like a real DNA molecule, right? So like, look at this guy here. You see how it's sugar, phosphate, sugar, phosphate, right? If we look at that up really super close, you can see they always alternate. Here's a little bitty one. It's always gonna alternate, right? And the wire is always going through that clear bead and then the phosphate bead is always the one that's kind of on its own out there. All right, so I've got right now, the last bead on there is a clear bead. That means I need to remember to put a gold bead on there, a phosphate bead. So I'm gonna put one phosphate on each end. All right, and then I'm ready to add another sugar as well another clear bead. And this is a DNA molecule, so that sugar is actually deoxyribose. That's where DNA gets its name from, deoxyribonucleic acid. It's the name of the, the sugar that you find in a DNA molecule. All right, so now yours should look like, whew, there we go, this. All right, so I got my first two base pairs on there, and then I put a, another phosphate and a sugar, right? We always have to have a phosphate and a sugar before we do the next base pair. All right, so for me, I've been using the left side as my leading strand. So let's see, I got A, I did C, now I'm gonna do G. All right, so for G is a green bead, so I'm gonna put a green bead on the left side. And then whenever I have a green bead, the other side's always gonna be red because G always goes with C. That's the base pair rules, right? G always goes with C. All right, and now we're gonna do the same thing we did before. All right, we're gonna take the opposite end, right? We're gonna like make a circle. Oops, these guys are slippery. All right, make a circle. And we're gonna put the opposite end, right? It's coming around like a circle here, right? See how it's like the other guy all coming around. And we're gonna put this end through the last base we did, which is for me, that's a guanine, the G, green and that sugar, just those two beads, that's it. Not the whole thing, never through the gold bead, never through the phosphate. All right, I'm gonna give that a little pull so it kind of stays put. 
while I worry about the other side. So now I'm gonna take this in and come around like a circle and I'm gonna put it through, oh, my red bead's escaping. I'm gonna put it just through my red bead, through my cytosine and my clear bead. All right, I'm gonna give that a little pull to kind of get it started. All right, so see how it's like a circle? All right, here's the fun part. You're just gonna pull it, pull it, pull it, pull it, pull it, and it's gonna make your next rung of your ladder. All right, it's so magical. All right, just like that. So now I've got my three base pairs, and see if I look at one side, let's do it like this. If I look at my one side here, it goes A, C, G, right? There we go. This, actually, this way is even better, huh? That matches my diagram exactly. So I got an A, C, G on one side and my base pairs T, G, C, right? It looks just like my diagram. And this codon would code for the amino acid cysteine, which is letter C if I wanted to write a secret message in my DNA beats. All right, so after you've done that for a little while, so I've got one that's a little further along here, right? We've done this for a little while. This one I've got um, six base pairs, which is two codons. This would code for two amino acids, right? So after I've done this for a little while um, and I feel like I'm finished, I wanna finish off this whole entire project, uh, we're gonna run the end of the wire back through all those phosphates. All right, I'm gonna do this on this little one that I've already worked on. So you're gonna take the end, so after this is kind of built up for a little while, all right, but yours is gonna be 12 long, mine's only three for time, right? You're gonna take that end and you're gonna tuck it back through those yellow beads. Remember the yellow beads didn't get a second, the wire didn't go through them again, right? So you're gonna put it back through, this is what's gonna like really tighten up that DNA ladder and make it solid for you. You're just gonna pull that through don't let it get twisted like that. It'll tie, make a knot in your wire. All right, there you go. You're gonna pull that through and that's gonna really make, really straighten out the sides of your DNA ladder. All right, I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side. So you're just taking that end and you're gonna put it right on through just those yellow beads that are sort of hanging off the sides of your ladder. All right, and go ahead and pull that through, but don't let it get tangled. Sometimes you get it twisted along the way there. There you go, all right. And that's gonna really make the sides of your DNA ladder, like this one's already been pulled through. See, it's much stronger and the sides are more square and the ladder's much more clear, all right? And after you've done that, this one has got its 12 bases, all right? Because there's all that wire in the side, you can give it a little twist and make your DNA helix, right? Here's a nice finished one that looks really nice, right? All right. And once you tuck those uh, those wires back through the phosphates, back through the gold beads, you can go ahead and snip the ends of those wires off. Like this is really solid. You don't have to do anything else or tie any knots or do anything to finish it off. You can just like clip that right on off like that. That'll be your finished DNA. Yours will be uh, twice as long as this, but see, you can twist it, make your little double helix shape. Um, you can even add uh, a keychain to it. Um, if you wanted to make earrings out of it, you could put an earring loop on there, but you would um, put the earring loop in between your first base pairs when you get started. Um, but there's all kinds of things you could do with this. You can um, code secret messages into your DNA so that you secretly have like a little word um, as you're going along. Just making sure I'm not forgetting any steps to tell you before I sign off here. Yeah, that's it. All right, so enjoy uh, your DNA Helix. You can look at the um, lesson plan with some still photos and slides and things that will help you along uh, down in the description. And um, happy genetic jewelry making.